Hi, and welcome to another episode of All Things Considered. Today I'm talking about mobile homes. And I'm talking about uh, mobile home parks or trailer parks where you can either put a single or a double wide trailer on a small plot of land. You own the trailer. You rent the plot of land for just a few hundred dollars a month maybe. Um, that was a good way of life for a lot of people that wanted to retire. Um, I've known several people that uh, have bought a mobile home and they put it on a plot of land for a couple hundred dollars a month and they lived out their old age and peace and tranquility. Everybody kind of knew each other. It was, it was a nice place to live. Um, now I'm not talking about those trailer parks where there's an awful lot of trash floating around and a lot of beer drinking, a lot of pickup trucks and that sort of thing. If you want to live that way, that's fine. But I'm talking about more like retirement, um, mobile parks. Um, and it says here that a lot of the mobile, own, mobile homeowners that the clock is ticking, especially in Seattle. An affordable slice of the urban housing market is vanishing as mobile home parks succumb to development, costing residents both their homes and their communities. The developers see mobile homes and mobile home parks as a waste of space. They could put townhomes, expensive, million to two million dollar townhomes on that property. There's a trailer park or a uh, manufactured homes community uh, called Halson, H-A-L-C-Y-O-N. Halson, and the very name of that uh, mobile home park evokes happy, happy tranquility. You have to kind of pardon me, I'm, my speech is not as great as some of the ones that are on the radio. The very name of the Halcom Mo Mobile Home Park evokes a happy tranquility, and that's what many residents were hoping it would be, an affordable place to enjoy their retirement space and do it in peace. For a small fraction of what a standard house costs in the Pacific Northwest, a notoriously expensive corner of the country, they could own a cozy little home, lease a narrow sliver of ground beneath it for a few hundred dollars a month. All you had to worry about was paying your rent on time and thinking about who you'd leave the shelter to after you were out of it. But that changed last year in July when all of a sudden the mobile home park was up for sale. The voracious Seattle real estate market which had already wiped out almost every other mobile home park around, had finally come to Halcom. A developer offered the owners $22 million. The plans to build 200 pricey townhomes on a 7.5-acre property near the city's northern border. The deal fell through, but the property is still for sale. And the neighbors who live there know that their community and their way of life are on borrowed time. A lot of uh, property owners, um, they see a lot of things as wasted space, like a lot of these property developers that are building these um, pod apartments, where it's like a 100 square foot pod and it's connected to a bathroom and a shared kitchen, and they put 12 of them together, and which counts as one, 12 bedroom apartment because it has a kitchen and a bath. They view kitchens as a waste of space because they try to make you think you're going to go out to eat every night. Like a lot of Seattleites that have that kind of money to where they can eat every night. Yeah, maybe in a McDonald's or a Burger King you could kind of eat out every day. But I love to cook, man. That's my thing. I love to cook. Says so these days, Mobile home or manufactured home communities, please don't call them trailer parks, residents have said. 
are most often associated with rural areas, but they have played an important role in many cities and suburbs as well, especially those that grew rapidly after World War II. Now, I kind of grew up in a trailer. My parents owned the farm. We sold the house in the city and we moved to a small farm uh, of about 10 acres of property. We put a double wide trailer on it. And I'll tell you, for all intents and purposes, with the right kind of uh, basing on that, uh, you couldn't tell it was a double wide trailer. You thought it was a home, like a Rambler or something. It was really nice. It says here, after World War II, by bridging the gap between the transients and the high density of rented apartments and the permanence and high cost of owning conventional houses. But successive waves of development in those cities and suburbs and, and suburbs in recent decades wiped away most urban mobile home parks. Seattle has just two left. How come geared to retirees and empty nesters who are 55 and older in the Bella B uh, mobile home park next door. Home mostly to working class families. Um, I'm not really for sure what Seattle's trying to do here. I, I get the sneaking feeling from the city council when I spoke to them and several of the developers that they want Seattle to be just, they want them to be just plain old rich people that live there. People with fancy schmancy two million dollar homes and they want them to have these ultra two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar a year jobs and and they just want the poor people to be out. They don't want anybody that's poor to be there anymore because they look at poor as kind of like like you're in line waiting at a grocery store and you see somebody ahead of you that's paying for a loaf of bread but they've got nothing but nickels and dimes and pennies in their pocket and the bread costs four dollars and they've got to count all that change and people get frustrated especially when all they have to do is just swipe their card and then go to their door to their their car and just drive off yeah i mean it's, it's kind of like that the rich people see the poor as an eyesore they see the poor and they see the lower middle class uh, as being um, as being um, a nuisance. Uh, speaking of that, let me just say this real quick. There used to be just three classes of people. There used to be the rich, there used to be the middle class, and then there was the poor. Well, now there's six classes of people. You got the uh, um, you got the extremely poor, which is the ones making twenty thousand or less, the ones on disability and welfare, and then you've got the ones that are making between fifteen to twenty dollars an hour. You got those people that are considered the upper tier of the poor. You get to be between like twenty and twenty five thousand twenty and twenty five dollars an hour, you think you're doing pretty good. But you're still in the poor. You haven't even broke into the middle class yet. And the middle class, you got probably, you want, like, well, in Seattle, they say 60000 a year is poor. But I'd say between, like, 50, 50 to 60, um, you're probably in the lower tier of the middle class. And then between, like, say, 100 to a hundred and a half, you're up in the upper crust of the middle class. And then you got the rich, you got the lower part of the rich and the upper part of the rich. You got the lower part of the rich, which is making like, say, 250 to a, a million a year, if you can consider that. That's probably the, the lower part of the rich. And then you've got the billionaires and the trillionaires, which are the upper crust of the rich. So you've got like three, you got like two different tiers to each connection now. It says here um, that if you're in a uh, if you're in a, uh, in a uh, mobile home residence, moving out would mean walking away from their retirement plans as well. Many of the park's mobile homes long ago stopped being truly mobile. Some have additions or features like covered carports that would make them unsafe to tow, and others are simply too dilapidated to move. How come? With its, interest, with its entrance of a dead-end street, 
offers a quiet respite from auto repair shops, mom and pop restaurants, and budget motels a few blocks away on Aurora Avenue. Residents gather at the Parks Clubhouse to play bridge or exercise with donated gym equipment in a dimly lit basement. Uh, January 2020, it says the city of Seattle, uh, let's see, how come, uh, helped organize residents to oppose the park's demise and persuaded the Seattle City Council to put a moratorium on any sale of Halcom or Bella B until 2020, while it considers possible zoning changes. Miss um, Mickelson said that the residents also were talking to potential buyers who would keep the park as is, though it was not clear whether the buyer would make it a big enough offer to satisfy the current owner, a trust overseen by U.S. Bank. Hello? A trust that's overseen by U.S. Bank. And U.S. Bank's not going to be happy with it staying like that because they see all the potentially lost profit. They want that money. A spokeswoman for the bank declined to answer questions about the Halcom properties. The owner of the Bella B Park, Vakan Sene, said he was not planning to sell. The uncertainty over Halcom's future has left some residents in limbo, unwilling to put money into the repairs but afraid to move far from the familiar routines, easy access to services like the Social Security Office and the Veterans Hospital in Seattle. Uh, a resident said that she moved to the city from Alabama more than 50 years ago. She bought and fixed up houses and ran into and ran an auto repair shop and then settled in Halcom in 2003. These days she teaches art at a nearby senior center and spends much of her time caring for other residents, some of whom are 20 years her senior. I don't want to go anywhere because my life is here, she said. Seattle's blue-collar roots, first as a community of fishermen, boat rights, and lumber mills, and then as Boeing Company town, are long past. Yeah, that's long gone. That, that Seattle is no longer there anymore. The city has reinvented itself as a tech hub. The city did not really reinvent itself. The city allowed itself to be reinvented because it was too... It was too... Uh, scared to stand up for itself. It says the city has reinvented itself as a tech hub and the problems that dominate the conversation at City Hall are homelessness and a shortage of housing, affordable housing, which are not unrelated. Well, uh, the city being a tech hub has brought in a lot of rich folks and people that want to become rich. It's brought in a lot of bougie livers people that want to be bougie living and it's brought in a bunch of people that uh, want to act like they're rich and they want to act like they uh, have it all made but really they don't. It says here evidence of the changing city is visible just outside Halcombe's fence. A sign at the growing lot just to the west announces plans to build 19 new three-story townhomes in the green strip between the property and the mobile home park. A cluster of homeless people have set up tents there. There are a half dozen mobile home parks in the neighborhood as recently as the 1880s, but by 2007 there were just five left in the whole city. The most recent to close, a 63-unit community not far from Halcom, was redeveloped in 2017 as multifamily housing. There's a lot more to the story than meets the eye, and I can go on and on about it, but I'm going to kind of give you my thoughts on things. Seattle was so intent on, at least recent Seattle, was so intent on um, allowing itself to become the big kid on the block that it didn't think of the consequences. It didn't think about what would happen. Uh, if they allowed this to happen. They allowed uh, big people to just come in and just dominate. Um, I don't know if you ever saw a movie called Tombstone, 
but Wyatt Earp and his brothers were talking to a, a sheriff um, that is this old sheriff in town and they were talking about the Cowboys and uh, he was saying how bad they were right and they were saying well why doesn't anybody try to stop them because they were destroying they were like destroying the residents there but the sheriff he said well the Cowboys are good for business and although I believe that the tech industry is destroying Seattle and I believe that the, the high cost of living is killing Seattle and I believe that uh, the high cost of rent is destroying Seattle as we know it the city council's take on it is that it's good for business and as long as it's good for business they're not going to try to stop it even if it destroys Seattle and Seattle becomes another Detroit something's got to be done Seattle I don't know what but it's got to be done if you happen to like this video please put a like and a subscribe uh, and also uh, put a comment um, I'd love to hear from you uh, if you know anybody that lives in uh, mobile home parks um, that uh, are not wanting to move kind of give me a heads up on where they're at um, I'd love to uh, do a video about the area um, also uh, like I said this is a, a a uh, UNI Productions, US Productions, uh, United States, or us, we the people. This is an US Productions. I can't do it without you. I rely on you for ideas. I rely on you for uh, uh, viewpoints, and I rely on you for comments. But I would rather rely on you for likes and subscribes because I'm not getting off the ground too quick. If you have an idea that can make my videos better, please put them in the comments below. If you think that my videos are okay, but there's something that needs to be fixed, let me know. If you have an idea for a video that you think would work out good, and um, you wanna talk about it, let me know. I'd love to uh, talk with you on it. Anyway, this has been All Things Considered. Have a good night, Seattle, and all points beyond.